Hey guys, welcome back to Mind Keys. Uh, my name is Dave, and uh, in this video, I wanted to talk a bit about separating out trigger from response. So let's go ahead and get into it here. So I don't know if you saw my last video or not, but um, I made a declaration that on this channel, the work that I want to do with you and what I want to talk about is about neurological kind of flexibility and freedom. So how do we grow and how do we shift our capacity to operate in different ways in our mind and body, right? That's kind of the major kind of core fundamental thing we're exploring here on this channel. By the way, I'm a coach and a hypnotherapist. I do a lot of work with people around this kind of stuff. And um, I want to just give you a more practical, quick hit video here today, talking about a problem that I'm seeing a lot of, and I'm sure you guys are probably also experiencing a lot of, and kind of offer some quick takes, some quick solutions on it. So one thing I'm seeing a lot in my Facebook feed um, and just more broadly in general in the comments section, anywhere you go online, is a lot of people obviously kind of arguing, having differences in, in perspective and opinion and these kind of narrative wars we see online a lot right now. And <clears throat> there's people who might be good friends or family members or, you know, whatever, who are just having these amazingly intense blowout fights. And quite frankly, I think it's really tragic and it's really painful to be a part of and to experience and to witness. And um, I wanted to talk to you a bit about what it means to be triggered and how we can deal with this. So we have this problem right now of, of just kind of loss of relationship blow out, blame, shame, judging each other, kind of just like people going at each other's fucking throats. And um, yeah, it's rough. It's brutal out there right now. And I don't know if you're experiencing it. I don't know if you're speaking up or if you're lashing out at other people yourself. But I wanted to kind of create some insight here. So what happens when we get triggered? right? Well, one of the things that, that happens when we get triggered is that we have some sort of perception or a meaning that we're carrying in the back of our, you know, kind of unconscious mind that gets brought up to the surface. So we have a perception that pulls up on a pre-made meaning that we already carry. And then we kind of equate that meaning with kind of a, a response that's fairly automatic that we tend to rely on as a way to deal with what it is that we think we're perceiving and the meaning that it is that we think we're dealing with, right? So we have this kind of, it's all very automatic, this kind of automatic per perception gets pulled out of the unconscious mind, which may or may not be accurate. The perception itself may not be correct. It might feel correct, but it may not be correct. And the meaning that is derived from that perception, again, may or may not be correct. And then the automatic, automated response that we have based on whatever meaning we've come to, based on what we're experiencing, we just, boom, fire off with. And that, again, may not be the best response for the situation. So here's kind of what I want to offer you. Um, when you're triggered, um, I want you to know that you can separate the trigger from from how you respond so for most people when we want to say no when we want to address something that we think is a problem when we're upset when we're angry when we want to assert a boundary any of these kinds of things we tend to lump it with the emotional baggage the emotional content to together to create this kind of triggered kind of weighty, intense response, right? So we, we go from trigger to response really quickly, and that response is loaded with that whole trigger and all that emotional baggage. And I want to just remind you, first and foremost, you can say no, or I disagree, or I'm not okay with that, or I see it differently without having to have the emotional content there. So you can deliver the communication, you can deliver the idea, you can deliver the disagreement, you can de de deliver the um, boundary, the firm no, with a smile on your face, with friendship. Uh, and
and this is this is what I want to talk about a bit. So if you think about it, what creates impact with the other? What creates influence? Um, what they teach in neurolinguistic programming, what they teach in hypnosis, what they teach uh, in a lot of fields of personal development is that the foundation of influence isn't judgment, isn't shame, isn't um, polarization, isn't being right. The foundation of influence, the foundation of actually making an impact on somebody else is rapport, it's connection. So rapport is just kind of a fancy way of that state that we feel when we're naturally in resonance with someone, where we're, where we're maintaining connection, where we feel instantly responsive to the other person and they feel instantly responsive to us. And we're kind of in this state of just naturally resonating together. When we're in that kind of a state, that's called rapport. And when we're in rapport, there's so much that can be done, that can be said, that can be uh, created, that can't, that's not possible when you're out of rapport. Um, this might be a little bit inappropriate, but for me, it kind of really hammers the point home. If you kind of think of people who are best friends, who just have this tight, long, big history, and they're in a good space, and they're laughing, and they're joking, they're out on the town, and once, you know, says, hey, screw you to the other one, that can go over and be a laugh. That can go over and be something funny or just like a lighthearted kind of like poke, right? Because there's rapport there. If two strangers who didn't know each other at all, uh, had never met, coming from different walks of life, didn't feel in commonality with each other. If one says the other, hey, screw you, that's grounds for a fight right? So the same message, you know, kind of a kind of an edgy one could be something that's just funny that actually escalates humor and makes people laugh more and is more fun, or it can be something that escalates conflict and, um, you know, creates division and can even, you know, create a physical fight. The same, same words. The difference is the rapport. And so I want to offer you this idea that when you're navigating your life, when you're navigating your relationships with people around you, and um, they do something that crosses your boundaries, they say something that you patently disagree with, they say something that stirs a trigger for you, that you can either talk at them, which is a break in rapport, you can insult them, you can you know, try to tear down their idea, you can try to tear down their point, you can disrespect them, you can condescend them, you can snark them. There's, there's so much of this going on right now. And all of that, right, is a break in rapport. So it, it destroys the very thing that creates the ability to have some sort of impact, that ha creates the ability to have some sort of conversation, that creates influence. Rapport comes from, or influence comes from rapport comes from resonance. No resonance or break in resonance, no influence, right? Uh, so if someone comes at us and says something we don't like and we don't want to hear it, it's not the right moment, or maybe you just disagree and you're tempted to escalate into rebutting, getting in an argument, um, just pause and check in with yourself and consider, okay, I could talk at them about this. I could say all kinds of stuff. I could tear down their ideas. I could rebut them. I could, you know, insult them. I could insult what they're talking about. I could insinuate all kinds of crappy things about their character, or I could maintain rapport and talk with them. So I could talk at them or I could talk with them. And if I talk with them, how would I approach having a disagreement with somebody rather than at somebody? How would I approach um, maintaining that sense of connection, that sense of respect, that sense of mutuality, that, that sense of good faith between two people while saying no, or no thank you, or I'd rather not, or I don't see it that way, or I disagree, or, okay, so you're coming from there, let me offer you this information, 
how do we reconcile this? Right? That's a whole different thing than you're a blank, you're this, you're that. I can't believe you said that. I can't believe you think that. I can't believe that's where you're coming from. What's your blah, 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 blah. Totally different thing. You know, rapport, no rapport. You know, talking at, talking with. Rather the other way around. Talk, talking with, talking at. So I just want to kind of leave you guys with that because what's going to make the difference between creating a better world or allowing our country and our world to just slide quickly downhill into degradation, into social fracturing, into conflict, into problems, what's going to make that difference is how much rapport is present between people. And that's something we directly have control over. So there's, there's a lot of things about the world out there, a lot of problems out there that we just don't have direct control over. And it's very frustrating. It's very overwhelming and frightening. But one thing we do have control over is the amount of rapport we generate with those around us. And um, in my own experience, you know, this is something that I'll, I'll be transparent with you. I have had my own struggles with, I've had my own learning curves with, uh, I have moments where I am very rapport breaky, um, and it almost always costs me. You know, even if I'm right or I win the argument in the short term, long term, it was damaged under the relationship. And options shrink from my life. And um, there's guilt that I carry from it, you know, or regret. And, uh, you know, what else happens from a break in rapport? And really, it just creates more of a sense of isolation, loneliness, and disconnect. So this is something, this is one of those places where we have control in life. We can maintain rapport with people. You don't have to be triggered. You don't have to be all emotional and wound up. Just say no. Or just say, I disagree. Or just to say, I see it differently. And I would suggest that this is a great place to practice maintaining rapport, separating out the emotion from the response. And really bringing with the response part, bring that rapport with you. Bring that sense of connection, that sense of trust, that sense of good faithness. And even if someone wants to kind of break rapport with you, which people will try to do, let's be clear, uh, you can still continue to be in rapport with them even as they're getting uppity and upset and angry and you know snarky and rude and you know accusatory you can still maintain rapport and uh if that's something that's hard for you you know uh, i want you to know that i am available to work with people i could even do like a, a group call if there's a lot of demand for it around helping you to anchor that in your nervous system so that's an easier thing so that you're less prone to go to the defensive you know retaliatory accusatory emotional kind of connection with your response so if you want help separating those out i can help you with that but this is really something that you can also work on on your own it's something you can just practice you can start to just become mindful of oh oh i'm triggered oh i'm a little upset oh i'm a little insulted how do I maintain rapport while I respond? You know, this really gets to that heart of that distinction of response versus reaction. So I would offer you just this final thought that a reaction is when your emotions are tied in with your response and you don't know how to separate them out. A response is when you know how to separate them out, you take ownership for your emotions and you do the right response regardless of whatever the emotional content is. And you find a way to process your emotions separately from the response and use the response as a skillful way to maintain rapport with those around you, maintain those important relationships, build relationships, continue to be a healing presence in the world while everyone else is kind of losing their shit because we need more of us out there operating at that, that level in that way where we're really bringing connective tissue we're bringing the healing connective energy because a lot of people want to just attack and control. So 
let's maintain rapport. Let's stay connected. Let's serve the world and our relationships and the big picture by just staying in that kind of good faith rapport space. So I hope this serves you. Be well. Much love to you guys, and I'll see you soon.